Are you ready for football? Oh, man, am I? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know. I, I went home last night. I didn't know that the Hall of Fame game was on TV, and I, I flipped around. I was like, oh, my gosh, I just got my fix. That's awesome. <laughs> Um, let's just jump right into the preview for the 2023 season. Sure. Let's talk about you first. You know, mm-hmm. this, you're going into your fourth season. Let's talk about that. For me. Absolutely. Yeah, it technically is the fourth season. Uh, we count that first season as year zero. Uh, you know, we, I don't think we need to rehash COVID. Uh, it was definitely a different dynamic. Not having a fall season, that was really weird. Then jumping into a half spring season. Um, I, I mean, I... I think it was good for our outgoing seniors, but honestly, it was really detrimental to my our program coming in new. Um, if I'd had to do over again without the consideration of the outgoing seniors, we wouldn't have had a spring season. We really just needed to do a get to know you. You know, when your first opportunity to meet with the entire team in person is physically on the field, all wearing gaiters after your first practice leading into a shortened spring season, that's really not an adequate kickoff. So yeah. we really count that as year zero. So to me, it's really year three in my mind in developing our program and growing our program. I always look at year three as kind of the turning point and where you've got now the majority of your players have been in the program with you, brought up in the culture, brought up in the expectations and the standards. And so now you've got a deeper pool of leadership that was brought in from the the ground roots, from the root level up in growing into what we're trying to build this program into. You know, talking about the the leaders on the team that came, you know, last year's team, they're coming over this year. Talk about what they are going to bring to this new team. Absolutely, yeah. You know, we've got a really strong leadership group. We don't have a, as deep a returning class as I would like to see. That's part of the growth that we need to see in our program. But the returners that we do have, they are strong leaders. I'm really, really impressed with their wanting to really grasp onto the program and, and make an impact and, and really take it by the reins. You know, guys like Carson Douglas, uh, guys like Kedrick Wooten, uh, guys like uh, Slayton Wheeler. Um, I mean, I can go on Jacob Ford, Jalen Babers. I mean, just tremendous leadership and, and not, and a lot of times you get it really centralized in one or two people. And I don't, I've always said from day one, I don't think that's the dynamic I want to create here. I'm not sure it's really healthy. So we try to distribute leadership where it needs to happen. And so we definitely put a lot of ownership and a lot of responsibility on our upperclassmen. Sometimes they take to it, sometimes they don't. With this class, we've got a strong group of 10 to 12 guys that I can really go to and count on to say what's needed to be said and have that private conversation and and really show the way for the younger guys in our program uh, how what how this program's supposed to function what the standards and the expectations are now let's just go into the 2023 season what you expect you know um, the returners and you already talked a little bit about them mm-hmm. and the new, newcomers coming in and the positions you need filled um, you know we lost Isaiah Bradford last year sure sure so let's just talk a little bit about what, what's happening. What's yeah, happen. yeah. So, again, I feel really good about our returning group. It's not the depth that I'd like to see. I mean, let's start on defense and our defensive line. I think we've got six really strong defensive linemen that can play for us out the gate day one. Some have a lot of experience coming back. Some have limited experience coming back. But it's not a deep group, but I think it's a really impactful group. Now, we have a big group of freshmen coming in right behind them that will give some depth and you know, we'll find some gems in there, some guys that will make an impact as freshmen because when you're not super deep, you're going to have to rely on some freshmen to come in and, and have some playing time and make an impact. Uh, our linebacker core, though, I, it might be about as strong as we've got on the entire defensive set. Uh, when you've got a Will Litton coming back, when you've got a Nate Sarver coming back, when you've got a, a, a Wingo coming back, I mean, those are guys that have played a significant amount, and we know already what we've got, and, and they're going to provide a lot of leadership in that group. But we've also, again, we've got a good freshman group coming in behind them. Uh, again, good I think we're really set day one with our starters. Now it's a matter of 
how can we develop that depth in those positions. Now, the position's always been the struggle. has been defensive back and just finding enough of those guys. The good thing is we've got a really nice core of guys returning back, some with more experience, some with less, but guys that have at least been through a season and been through spring ball, uh, like a Jalen Kelly, uh, like a Micah Morrison, um, and, I mean, definitely a Lawson Stockton who has played in a lot of different positions, so his ability to be able to move and put where we might need him, where we might have an injury or, or someone that's kind of you know, not performing, he can go in and fill in that position really, really well because he's extremely intelligent and can take over a lot of those positions. But he's really developed himself into a, a better and better athlete. Um, you know, a, you know, a, a lot of guys in in that position, uh, or excuse me, in those positions there. A uh, Colby Barton, who you know, we really started to show some things very early in the season last year, and then got hurt. Now he's back after a spring, so we're really anxious to see see how some of these newer guys come in and. and and really fill some roles on the defensive side. Uh, offensively, I feel as comfortable going in to a season as, as we ever have. Um, the spring was just almost uh, almost unconscious. And we talk about it a lot in our program. If we want to play fast and furious, um, we have to be able to play at a level where we're not out there thinking. And I felt like there was a lot of opportunities there that we, we had in the spring to show that the offense is coming on uh, to the point where the guys can just go out there and just play and we're not having to analyze. And so really happy with where we're at. But, you know, the number one thing is, and everybody wants to know who's going to pull the trigger. And I can't tell you right now. I mean, day one, it's Brady Miller. Brady's got the most experience coming back. He's a redshirt sophomore. Uh, he's now going into his third year in the program. And he's got you know the most amount of reps um, for uh, you know for our guys in the program. He's got a start under his belt. He's got three quarters in another game, uh, but we'll see. We've got a, a strong group of, of uh, guys that will challenge him. Um, you know a, a Chris Funk, a, a Eli Funk, um, you know a, a Joe Golly. Um, you know, a Noah uh, Payez. I mean, these are all guys that can come in and contend for, for sure and, and, and really push them and, and have a year under their belt. I mean, we'll definitely see how some of the newcomers come in. We've got three, in, uh, two incoming freshmen and one transfer, uh, and we'll see how those guys do. But, uh, you know, we definitely need to find who that guy is. But, you know, my biggest concern right now really is at the offensive line. Um, I feel good about uh, some of the guys returning, like a Jacob Four, who's really going into four years of experience, if you count year zero in the spring, and how hard he has worked to really shape and master his body to, in order to master his craft has been extraordinarily impressive. I mean, just he's the epitome of what we want in our program. He's a true scholar and an athlete, and he's a guy that just works at it daily and works hard at it daily to really be the to really improve what you know God has given him, um, you know I'm anxious to see how year two on the grass for for Zane Alls looks. Uh, you know a local product just like just like Jake coming out of Cave City. Zane's from Hoxie. Um, you know a lot of upside early on. Pure redshirt senior, uh, freshman season last year started every game. Definitely had some freshman, second year freshman uh, issues, but I really expect for him to, and, and to really make that jump and be a guy that's going to you know, be a linchpin and an anchor for us at right tackle. Uh, right guard, center, left tackle, all up in the air. I don't know. I mean, we've definitely got some candidates returning back. Uh, that I feel really good about, but there's going to be a lot of competition and a lot of learning, and there's going to be some opportunities for a, a freshman or two. Hopefully, we don't have to start a, a pure freshman on the line, but we did it last year and we did okay in a, a lot of those situations. But you know, if we can avoid it, we would rather avoid it for sure. Talk about some of your skill positions, like the wide receiver and the running back positions. You know, there's no doubt at running back we feel really, really confident and really strong. When you've got a, a guy like Jalen Babers and Aiden Huntsman coming back at our B back, our true tailback position, uh, you can't beat that. But we've got some good depth behind him. You know, a Kurt Overton. Um, you know, we've we've got and we've got other guys in there that you know will really make a difference. A, a Jacob Hutto, uh, a Tanner Mobley. Uh, we're really looking forward to see year two for those guys and and what's next for those. That they're going to provide some tremendous depth and and really can make an impact in those positions. Aiden's kind of a special case though. He's a guy that we can swing to a, a couple different positions. So you're going to see him like we did last year. You're going to see him in a slot position, but you're going to 
see him a lot more at the running back position as well. So really anxious to see that. And then we pr it's, it's a weird dynamic that we have really at the wide receiver position, but we've got a ton of upperclassmen at outside and inside wide receiver with a, a, a Reggie Brown coming back at the slot receiver with uh, Xavier Long and Carson Douglas and, and uh, Clifford Washington, uh, uh, Jaron Price uh, coming back at the outside wide receiver position. We really, really have a lot of upperclassmen, but then we've got a really big divide and then it's going to be all freshmen after that. So there's, we're going to have to give some freshmen a lot, of, a lot of run early, a lot of reps early to see how they develop, see how they grow, because we're going to lean on them for some depth this year, but then we're going to count on them in a lot of starting positions next year. And so there's, there's that need to really cultivate that younger group this year. Uh, one, to save the legs of our upperclassmen who have all the reps and all the experience, and so they don't need to get a ton of reps in practice. We need to get them ready for games, and we need to continue to develop those those underclassmen. I forgot to add the tight ends in there. Yeah, yeah. So you know, we're really only returning one true tight end, and then we have some freshmen coming at coming back. So we're kind of modifying that position, and we, we don't even in our room now we don't even call it a tight end. It's really a J or a hybrid, and so that's where Aiden and uh, Jackson Littlepage will will cycle in uh, together back and forth in that position, and then you know we've had some freshmen coming in that we'll see how they develop. First year of Division Three. Talk about the independent. What that's going to be like for you? It's going to be crazy. Uh, definitely unique. Never been in this situation before. Uh, you don't realize uh, the importance and the uh, the security blanket that uh, having a conference is like until you don't have one. Um, you know, we've been working on this schedule since. I mean, it's been 15 months now. Uh, once we knew that this was a for sure deal and that we were not going to be members of a conference, uh, we were beating the bushes uh, to find 10 games that were mostly Division Three opponents. We didn't want to hodgepodge and play half of our of our old Sooner Athletic Conference schedule uh, from last year. We didn't want to have to go in and do a couple of Division II games. You know, that was a possibility. The the SAC, uh, you know, so continuing to play a, a Sooner Athletic Conference schedule was still a possibility. That was not the direction I wanted to go. If we're going to be Division Three, let's be Division Three and let's make that move now. Now, it's required us to do some things in travel. You know, we're going to go to Western New York twice. I mean, we're going to go play Alfred State uh, week six, and then we're going to go to uh, Hilbert week eight, I think it is, in Octo late October. Uh, who knows what Buffalo, New York will look like the last weekend in October. Uh, we'll find out, but uh, it'll definitely be interesting for sure. But I'm really, really gratified. I mean, we are literally at this point in time, as we shoot this right now, we are still working on a 10th game. So we're really hopeful that we can secure that. Um, and, you know, the, the turmoil and, and uh, you know, everything that's going on in higher education right now has not made our, our progress easy. I mean, we were secured with nine to ten games at, at a couple different points this year and with a couple different schools closing and another school shutting down their football program, at least for a year, uh, we found ourselves at this point where we're back down to nine games. So it's, it's been a roller coaster for sure. But I'm also really enthused about it. I'm really excited about it. I mean, we're going to play opponents. I've never been to that part of the country to play football or really even visit. Uh, playing opponents that I've never had any type of contact or association with. So it's going to be unique. Uh, and then kind of returning to some roots, you know, playing McMurray out of Abilene. I mean, I, I kind of have familiarity with that, that you know, Abilene, Texas, for sure, when I spent a year at, uh, at Abilene Christian. Uh, we didn't play McMurray, but I definitely knew, knew of McMurray because they're right there in town. And I I actually played McMurray as a junior in college and so uh, you know kind of excited to get back and that will be a school that will continue to to be in our conference moving forward uh, we're playing it at least right now 100 percent playing a JV game with Centenary out of Shreveport Louisiana who will be a future opponent they're adding football this year their first year to play uh, will be a JV season and they'll play a full varsity season in 2024 and so this this kind of purgatory year uh, is going to be really interesting and, and fun in a lot of ways. And then I'm really looking forward to 2024 where we're full members of the uh, Southern Collegiate Athletic Conference, the SEAC, with McMurray and uh, um, Austin College and Centenary. Uh, it'll be a unique deal there, too, where we've only got four teams and playing a double round robin and things like that. But I'm excited about it because it, it really is this year's the springboard into the future for what, uh, excuse me, what uh, Lion football is going to look like moving forward.